So how much protein do we really need over 50 years old? The answer to that question depends on a lot of variables, including how active we are, how much body fat we're carrying, and what our goals are. If you're watching this video, then it's fairly safe to say that you are looking to get into better shape and build some muscle, because we can get fit and build muscle at any age. So let's take a look at the minimum requirements first. The minimum daily recommended intake of protein is 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day, or 0.36 grams per pound. Now they did a study with a group of 20 healthy people between the ages of 52 and 70, with half the group eating the minimum recommended amount of protein, and the other half had 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, or 0.68 grams per pound, almost double. One of the rules in order to be a participant in this study was that they couldn't be doing regular resistance training, as what they really wanted to find out was if there was any benefit to increasing protein above the minimum requirement for people over 50 who weren't actively trying to build muscle, as our need for protein goes up when we're resistance training. What they found was after four days, the high protein intake resulted in increased rates of muscle protein synthesis, which improved the protein balance, creating an anabolic response. This anabolic response helps to protect us from muscle loss due to aging and inactivity. So increasing daily protein to 1.5 grams per kilogram for non-training adults has been shown to offset anabolic resistance, which is basically the body's reduced ability to repair muscle in response to ingesting protein. And this happens with age. But what about those of us who are active and hard training? To see if I could find the answer to this question, I turned to a study done on master athletes. And unfortunately, the answer as of yet isn't so black and white when it comes to daily protein intake. They compared master triathletes with the average age of 53 to some younger athletes. Their average age is 27. This was a diet controlled study with all the participants having their protein being set at 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight per day, which is only slightly more than what was used in the previous study we talked about with the untrained older adults. They had them do a half hour downhill run to create muscle damage. Post-exercise, they were all given a drink containing 20 grams of protein, which has been shown to maximally stimulate muscle protein synthesis in young athletes. Over the next three days, they continued to train and had their rate of muscle protein synthesis analyzed over this time. And while it might seem like a no-brainer, the younger athletes recovered faster and the rate of muscle protein synthesis was higher than in the master athletes. But these master athletes were very highly trained, training a minimum of 10 hours a week. So the conclusion they came to in this study was that this higher level of fitness did not offset the need for higher protein intake in older people. They referenced some studies that showed older sedentary adults had an improved muscle protein synthesis, single dose response to as much as 40 grams of protein, where younger adults' response peaked at 20 grams. But muscles don't recover after a single dose of protein. Muscle recovery can take as long as 48 to 72 hours, which is why daily protein intake is important. This study hypothesized that the master athletes might have recovered better with a greater protein intake. Based on these two studies, I think it's safe to say that we should be keeping our protein intake over 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight or 0.72 grams per pound, which is still under the traditional bodybuilding rule of thumb of a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Now actually, I would like to move away from using body weight as the basis for figuring out how much protein we need. For if we take two men with the exact same lean body mass, but one man is at 15% body fat and the other is at 25% body fat, based on body weight, the man with the 25% body fat would be needlessly eating more protein, which is why I would rather use percentage of overall calories, ensuring we have enough calories available for all our nutritional needs. I would recommend that we keep our protein intake to the upper end of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine's recommendation, which would make 30 to 35% of our diet being protein. This way, we can have all the building materials we need to keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.